what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and today we will continue with our discussion on the bhagavad gita we saw the first 24 verses from the first chapter and now we will continue with the 25th verse and we will discuss on the other verses also and what has happened till now krishna has been instructed by arjuna that please take my chariot in between both the armies of the Kurus and the Pandavas and let me see who is there on their side, who is there on my side. Yes, the assessment is going on. And we have seen how Krishna, although being the Supreme Lord, has accepted such a humble role as the charioteer of Arjuna. Yes, so now we will begin with the 25th verse and before beginning, as I say, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and he will be there. And let's start with the prayers. Omagyan timiran dhasya gyananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmai shri guru venamaha. I will recite the 25th verse of the first chapter. There you go. Bhishma drona pramuktaha sarvesham cha mahikchitam. Vacha partha pashyaitan samavetam kurun iti. So now the translation of what is actually the meaning of this Sanskrit verse. In the presence of Bhishma, Drona and all other chieftains of the world, the Lord said, Just behold partha, all the kurus assembled here. <laughs> so here Lord Krishna is telling to Arjuna. And Arjuna is referred to as Partha because he is the son of Pritha who is actually Kunti. Pritha is another name for Kunti, his mother. So the son of Pritha is named as Partha. So here <coughs> in the presence of Bhishma, Drona and all other chieftains, Krishna is telling that, see the Kurus have assembled here, your most beloved grandfather Bhishma and your best, your beloved teacher. So now we will see the purport. As the super soul of all living entities, Lord Krishna could understand what was going on on the mind of Arjuna. So see, Krishna knows everything what is going on in Arjuna's mind. Because why? He is the super soul. Paramatma as we say. The use of the word Rishikesha in this connection indicates that he knew everything. <laughs> Rishikesha is used in uh, two verses earlier. Yes, it is not there exactly in this verse. In 2-3 verses earlier, Rishikesha has been used. And therefore, Rishikesha means one who is the controller of the senses, the Indriyas, yes. Therefore, he knows what is actually going on in the mind because mind is the con mind is be above the senses, yes. Mind is the controller of the senses. That is why when the mind gets disturbed, the senses also get agitated, yes. We have the experience. And here Krishna is... Rishikesh, he is the controller of the senses and the mind, so he knows what is going on in Arjuna's head. And the word Partha, meaning the son of Pritha or Kunti, is also similarly significant in reference to Arjuna. As a friend, he wanted to inform Arjuna that because Arjuna was the son of Pritha, the sister of his own father Vasudev, he agreed to be the charioteer of Arjuna. So, Kunti is the sister of Vasudev, yes, and Vasudev is the father of Krishna. So, in Hindi, as we say, uh, Bua. Bua is the sister of your uh, father. So, Krishna was, um, Kunti was the sister of Krishna's father. So, that's what it said here that. Because of that relation, he had agreed to be Arjuna's charioteer and also because he is a great devotee, that's why. Now, what did Krishna mean when he told Arjuna to behold the Kurus? So, see, the important point here is, every reference to Arjuna has a very significant meaning. Because here, Krishna refers to Arjuna as Partha. That means he is telling him that because you are related to me, through Kunti. That is why I am becoming your charioteer. So, he is not referring to Arjuna as Gurakesh here or as somebody else. So, every reference to Arjuna in the Gita by Krishna 
is very specific towards the context of the sloka there you see <laughs> so this is how you uh, understand the gita not that just okay just i am reading somewhere krishna tells arjun is partha sometimes he says gudakesh sometimes he says bharata yes bharata why he says that because he wants to uh, appeal to arjuna's higher nature of being born in the dynasty of king bharat yes when he is expected to do to do great things like king bharat then krishna will address arjuna as bharat and here because he is referring to his relationship with kunti that is why he is referring to him as partha yes and in the earlier verse he had addressed arjuna as gurakesh because he was not sleeping in the night and he was practicing archery he had conquered his sleep that is what is uh, referred to in the earlier verses yes when arjuna was referred as gurakesh because arjuna had conquered both sleep and ignorance so references to arjuna are very specific towards the context of the shloka yes now now what did krishna mean when he told arjuna to behold the gurus did arjuna want to stop there and not fight <laughs> krishna never expected such things from his from the son of his aunt pitha the mind of arjuna was thus predicted by the lord in friendly joking so actually krishna is indirectly chastising arjuna that, that what do you want to see basically na? you already know but why do you want to see so we will see what the dilemma which is going on in arjuna's mind in the future verses so krishna actually was being sarcastic here when he said that just behold partha all the kurus assembled here yes so basically krishna is not very happy here that why do we want to see na is the time to fight and why why all this seeing and wanting to know just fight that's what krishna wanted so now we will read the 26th verse also because this purport is very short tatra pasyat sthitan partha pitrun atha pitamahan pitamahan acharyan matulambhitanan putran potram sakhis tatha svasruan suhridas chaiva senayor ubhayor api translation to the 26th verses there arjuna could see within the midst of the armies of both parties who are both parties both parties are the kurus and the pandavas yes both the parties means arjuna's chariot was in between both the parties yes he could see within the midst of both the uh, armies of both the parties his fathers grandfathers teachers maternal uncles brothers sons grandsons friends and also his father in laws and well wishers so he saw everybody this side and everybody that side and now the purport is on the battlefield arjuna could see all kinds of relatives he could see persons like bhurishrava who were his father's contemporaries bhurishrava was a contemporary of his father who was his father pandu yes and then he also saw grandfathers like bhishma and somadatta somadatta was the father of bhurishrava teachers like dronacharya and kripacharya yes and who is the father of somadatta bahlika bahlika is the father of somadatta so first is bahlika then there is somadatta then there is bhurishrava and bahlika because somadatta and bhishma are contemporaries yes that means bahlika is bhishma's uncle kind of <laughs> and bhurishrava is the son of somadatta and he saw teachers like dronacharya and kripacharya maternal uncles like shalya and shakuni shalya was the brother of madri who was the other wife of pandu madri was the mother of nakul and sahadev who was tricked by duryodhana to join the kurus when he wanted to join yudhishthir and shakuni is of course the maternal uncle of duryodhana and brother of gandhari who is the wife of dhritarashtra the queen brothers like duryodhana sons like lakshmana friends like ashwatthama well wishers like kritavarma kritavarma was the commander in chief of the narayana sena the army of 
Lord Krishna, who was on the side of the Kurus, and Krishna was on the side of the Pandavas. He could see also the armies which contained many of his friends. So you see, all these people are mentioned here. So I will read one more verse here because these verses are very short. The twenty seventh verse. तन समीक्ष्य सकाउंतेया सर्वन बंधु अवस्थितम् कृपया पर विशिष्टो विसिधन इदम् अव्रवित। The translation is when the son of Kunti, Arjuna, saw all these different grades of friends and relatives, he became overwhelmed with compassion and thus spoke. There it starts. Now the game begins. And there's no purport to this verse, so we will go to the 28th verse, where Arjuna starts speaking again. Arjuna uvacha, uvacha means speech. So when you say Shri Bhagavan uvacha, which will start later in the Gita, it, it means Krishna is speaking. Sanjay uvacha means Sanjay is speaking. Dhritarashtra uvacha means Dhritarashtra is speaking. Yes. So Arjuna uvacha, Arjuna is speaking. Dhrishtve mam swa janma krishnam yutsam samupasthitam siddhanti mam gatrani mukham cha parishishyati Mukham cha parishishyati Do you understand the meaning of this? I will tell you. Arjuna said, My dear Krishna, seeing my friends and relatives present before me in such a fighting spirit, I feel the limbs of my body quivering and my mouth drying up. Mukham cha parishushyati. My mouth is drying. What happens when we undergo paralysis sometimes? We are not able to, we are not able to feel there is any iota of liquid remaining in our mouth. Everything just gets dried up. It seems like that. Yes. Then there is a beautiful purport. And this is the last purport we will see for today. Any man who has genuine devotion to the Lord has all the good qualities which are found in godly persons or in the demigods. See what's written. Any man who has genuine devotion to the Lord has all the good qualities which are found in godly persons or in the demigods. Who has genuine devotion to the Lord. It's not a show of devotion that I go to temple in Janmashtami only. <laughs> Or I go to the temple in Ram Naomi. Or I go to the temple every day maybe. But if you are a uh, conditional follower. Or if you are just doing show off. To show others what a great spiritualist you are. Then this definition does not apply to you. Which means you may not have the godly qualities. Any man who has genuine devotion to the Lord. Has all the good qualities which are found in godly persons. Or in demigods. Where else? The non-devotee, however advanced, he may be in material qualities and qualifications by education and culture, lacks in godly qualities. Therefore, materialistic education alone is not enough to make you a very good person. Yes, you have to be spiritually elevated. Only then, the godly qualities manifest in you. And even in Srimad Bhakutam, there is a reference to this very beautiful where it says, Harava bhaktas kuto mahad gunan manorathe na sati dhavato bahi. That sloka is there where it is said that a devotee of God has all good qualities. And if you are not a devotee of God, you probably don't have any good quality. Because those good qualities which are there in you, if you are not spiritually elevated, they will be taken off by allurements or by challenges or by doubts. Or due to any other reason, yes, you may not be able to maintain your goodness. So, goodness without spirituality is of not much value. If you want your goodness to be maintained, then you must be connected to a source by which your goodness is always maintained, ever maintained, yes. So, it's written a non-devotee. Non-devotee means one who is not having faith that God is the supreme. He, however advanced, he may be in material qualifications by education and culture, lacks in godly qualities, yes. So, he will lack good qualities. As such, Arjuna, just after seeking his kinsmen, friends and relatives on the battlefield, was at once overwhelmed by compassion for them who had so decided to fight among themselves. So, when Arjuna, because he is a great devotee, 
he has a lot of compassion for the people and when he saw all these people have assembled to fight he was overwhelmed by compassion he didn't want this fight as far as his soldiers were concerned he was sympathetic from the beginning but he felt compassion even for the soldiers of the opposite party for seeing their imminent death so arjuna knew that many warriors are going to die here so for seeing their imminent death means he knew that they are on the side of evil so they will perish and many people on my side will also die so because he is a very great devotee inside so he is feeling this uh, softness inside his heart so that is not his weak nature that is actually because of his compassion which he had so he was feeling compassion for people from both the parties from his own party and from the opposite party also and while he was thinking so the limbs of his body began to quiver and his mouth became dry so his limbs were shaking like this <laughs> and his mouth became very dry he was not able to breathe maybe <laughs> he was more or less astonished to see their fighting spirit maybe he was thinking that my god these people are going to die but they look so much enthusiastic practically the whole community all blood relatives of arjuna had come to fight with him it's terrible all the people from blood relatives from this side from that side everybody was his relative right this overwhelmed a kind devotee like arjuna although it is not mentioned here he uh, still one can easily imagine that not only were arjuna's bodily limbs quivering and his mouth drying up but he was also crying out of compassion so there arjuna undergoes this paralysis my god these are all my relatives and because he is a very soft hearted person he is feeling very bad for everybody for people on his side and for people on the other side because he know everybody is going to be destroyed because this is a big bloody fratricidal war which everybody has decided to fight this overwhelmed a kind devotee like arjuna yes and although it's not mentioned but he was also crying out of compassion so see He was crying very much. Such symptoms in Arjuna were not due to weakness, but to his soft-heartedness, a characteristic of a pure devotee of the Lord. There you go. I said it is not because of weakness, but it is because of him being soft-hearted. Weakness is due to attachment. Weakness is what the Tarastra had for Duryodhana. This is not weakness. This is soft-heartedness. <laughs> Yes, now comes that shloka which I was telling. Yasyasti bhaktir bhagwati akinchana sarvair gune stattra sama sate suraha halava bhaktasya kuto mahat gunan manorathe na sati dhavato bahi It is there in the Srimad Bhagavatam 5th canto 18th chapter 12th verse 5.18.12 one who has unflinching devotion for the personality of god at hath has all the good qualities of the demigods there you see in hindi you say devtao ke sabhi dullabh aur acche gun us vyakti mein paaye jayenge jo bhagwan ka bahut bada bhakt ho but one who is not a devotee of the lord has only material qualifications that are of little value so he may be a millionaire a billionaire or he may be the most beautiful person or maybe the most intelligent person but in the eyes of god it has no value or very less value because all of those things will be taken away from him yes that's what is meant here this is because he is hovering on the mental plane and is certain to be attracted by the glaring material energy hovering in the plane means manorathe na sati dhavato bahi manoratha is chariot of the mind the mind is telling go to this woman today go to the other woman today go to this girl go to that boy go to this career go to this uh, organization you will get this you will get that go after money go after car go after this go after that you will find happiness but you get everything in this world except happiness yes because you are disconnected with the ultimate source of happiness That is it from my side. We will discuss on the next locals later. If you have any questions, queries, or comments, and if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, then please subscribe to it. And if you like this video, click the thumbs up and share it with everybody else. Okay. Until next time, have a good la, good day. Bye bye. See you.